Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade equation. Which means I came up with the idea but anyone can come up with an idea like this. So no big deal, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. We have z squared, z is a complex number, equals z minus z bar. Z bar represents the complex conjugate of Z. If you've seen other videos or especially the lecture videos, you should know, or maybe you're already familiar, that the complex conjugate of a number is a unique number. And when you multiply and add the Z and Z bar, you always get a real number. That's very unique, right? So let's see how we can solve this problem in more than one way. My one of the methods is just going to be an attempt that's not necessarily guaranteed to give us a solution. OK, sometimes I do that because that kind of gives you an idea about the problem solving experience when you have no prep, like you have no idea if your method is going to work. That's kind of more realistic. That's what I find. And some people don't like it when you don't have a script and you make mistakes. But most of the time I don't uh, cut those parts out unless they're super long and annoying. Anyways, let's see what happens. So for my first method or attempt, whatever you want to call that, I'm going to go ahead and try the following. Because I have z and z bar in this equation, they're kind of mixed around. I'm going to conjugate both sides, right? So whenever um, you have a number like z and w, let's say z plus w, if you conjugate it, this should be equal to z bar plus w bar, right? In other words, um, you can just conjugate separately and it should give you the same thing. And you can easily prove something like this, uh, one of the easiest proofs in math probably. Uh, you can say, hey, suppose this is A plus BI and this is C plus DI, and then you should evaluate each separately and then you're gonna realize, hey, okay, they're equal. Uh, th I think this also works for products, for quotients, differences, so on and so forth. But what about squares? Well, squares is a product, right? So it should work. Well, let's take a look. Does the conjugate of z squared is the same thing? Is the conjugate of z squared the same thing as the conjugate of z squared? Get the difference? Okay, now let's find out. If z is equal to a plus bi, I'm going to square it first. So the left hand side says square the z. That's going to give you a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. And then uh, z bar. And then I have to conjugate this, right? So let's go ahead and conjugate it. If you conjugate z squared, you're going to get a squared minus b squared with minus 2abi, right? Of course, you have to change the imaginary part. So that's what I got from the left-hand side. This is the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Let's go ahead and find out. You have to conjugate z first, which is a minus bi, and then you have to square the conjugate. You can write it this way or without parentheses. doesn't matter. No big deal. That's going to be a squared minus b squared, because I'm supposed to square this, minus 2abi, which is actually equal to this. So yes, it works with squares too. So my method is going to work, I think, right? At least I tried. I didn't know it ahead of time, though. I kind of had a feeling, but that was subtle. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We have z squared equal, equals uh, z minus z bar. So I'm going to conjugate both sides, and when I do, I'm going to get that and that, and that's going to give me uh, z squared, conjugate of z squared, which is the conjugate of z squared. And on the right hand side, I'm going to get z bar minus z. Okay, this is kind of interesting, right? Because notice that the original equation is very similar to this with a tiny bit of difference. It's the same thing but reversed. Hmm, that's interesting, right? That kind of means that these two are opposites. But at the same time, they're supposed to be equal, right? Okay, great. So that means z bar squared is, which is uh, z squared. Okay, I think uh, I kind of messed up here. Let me go ahead and fix it real quick. Okay, here we go. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add these equations to get zero. Make sense? Cool. So if we add these equations... Um, I'm going to get z bar squared plus z squared equals zero. Okay, what does that mean though, right? I don't think it's, this is going to give me something helpful. Oh, you know what? One of the things that I can try, and I got to thought about it right now, 
is that, let me write the original problem, z squared is equal to z minus z bar. And another thing that I could probably do is to use the polar form. Let me try that before I get into the uh, second method, okay? z equals r times e to the i theta. In this case, z bar is just going to be r, and it's going to have the same, um, what's it called, the modulus. The only difference is going to be, it's going to be negative theta. Make sense? You're going to reflect it kind of like this. If you have z, z bar is going to be like this. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, z squared is just going to be square this. That's going to be r squared e to the 2i theta. And that's going to be the difference between r e to the i theta minus r e to the negative i theta. Great. So we kind of have like, uh, we can take out an r. r is going to cancel out. And then we're going to get e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta. And we can definitely make a common denominator, e to the i theta minus 1 over e to the i theta. And then this is r e to the 2i theta. Make a common denominator. That's going to give you e to the 2i theta minus 1 over e to the i theta, which is equal to r e to the 2i theta. And then cross multiply r e to the 3i theta equals e to the 2i theta minus 1. I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but at least I tried. So give me some credit. And now what, what am I going to do next? Can I safely assume that r is going to be 1 in this case? I'm not exactly sure. It may or may not work, but r equals 1, definitely you can give it a try. If r is equal to 1, then I'm going to get e to the 3i theta equals e to the 2i theta minus 1. And then if you call e to the i theta something like uh, maybe w, I don't want to use z. I could use z, I guess, but that's a different story. Uh, I could get w cubed equals w squared minus 1 and then w cubed minus w squared plus 1 equals 0. Uh-oh, uh -oh, this is not getting anywhere. Uh, there might be a nice solution from here. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Anyways, this is too messy. Let's get back to, or let's go to second method because it's much nicer, okay? So what's my original equation? z squared equals z minus z bar. And the second method is shorter, obviously, is basically just setting z equal to a plus b. And there's a good reason behind it because it's the name of this channel. Come on, guys, you knew that, right? So let's go ahead and replace z with that, a plus b i squared. And z bar is just going to be what? a minus b i. Easy, right? You just negate the imaginary part. Expand it, you already know that. a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. Here, uh, a cancels out, we end up with 2bi. To be or not to be, I had to say that, right? So from here, we get the following, right? We get uh, a squared minus b squared equals 0 uh, because there's no real part on the right hand side. a squared equals b squared, which implies a is b or a is negative b, right? And the second part gives us 2ab equals 2b. So put everything on the same side and factor. You're going to get 2b outside and then a minus 1. I don't know why I had to think about it that long, right? Uh, and this is going to give me uh, b equals 0 or a equals 1. Now let's get back to this. We said that first a is equal to b and they're both equal to 0. So from here they're both 0, which means z is equal to 0, right? Obviously z is equal to 0 is going to satisfy the equation because remember, Z, equal, z squared equals z minus z bar, 0 equals 0 minus 0, obviously, right? What about the second part? a is equal to negative b. With 0, that gives us the same thing. With a equals 1, it gives us a different thing. So if a is equal to 1, then b is going to be negative 1. And from here, z is going to be a plus bi. So it's going to be 1 minus i. So that seems to be another solution along with z equals 0. But let's go ahead and check out uh, Lambert's, I mean, not Lambert's, what am I talking about? I got stuck on Lambert. Uh, let's take a look at Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh, I wasn't expecting 1 plus i. Why does this work? Because if z works, z bar also works because it's symmetrical in z and z bar. But why didn't we get that from here? That's a good question. That's for you to find out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.